Hello everybody on YouTube, my name is Frigid Hyperion, and welcome back to the Wilds of Wildmount. Um, since we have played last, we have all leveled up to level 3. And as always, Lily is playing as Windchime. Quinn is playing as Animo. Kyle is playing as Miles. Myself, Cameron, am playing as Moonzik. Rocky is playing as Edward. Kale is playing as Brom. And Emily is our lovely dungeon master. Please take it away. You find yourselves on the deck of the Wave Chaser. A body lays at your feet blood pooling and seeping into the wood. It was just five days ago that you first boarded this ship. After fleeing from the sinking Flora Isle, you and a few other refugees reeled from the lives lost in the Shogun raid. Captain Three Earrings approached you, hoping that maybe the bravery that you showed on the Isle was clear. She talked of the Rod of Retribution, an artifact held by the leader of the Shogun, Salachai. Not wanting to think of the horrors the rod could wreak across the coast, you all agreed to retrieve it. So, you made your way to Port Damali to drop off the refugees. And such began your journey in earnest. It was then you were boarded by a Clovis Concord ship. The lieutenant commander was speaking of pirates, the Wave Chaser is a pirate ship. You fought back, not for the ship, but because you knew he would not listen to reason, and your lives were in danger. It was a bloody battle, nearly losing your lives. Days had passed, and you grew closer to each other and to the crew. Finally, the day was upon you. It was time to sink into the depths under the waves. The currents pushed and pulled at you, causing you to question whether or not you could even survive this path. Body and debris from the sunk isle floated amongst you as you came face to face with Selichai, chanting as she raised the rod, one of the islanders that you knew turned into a shark body abomination with a sickening sound. These were monstrous creatures that you had fought before. Fearing for your lives, you put up a good fight. But these creatures were chipping away at you. Blood muddied the water. Certain that you would lose, Miles reached out to Selichai, shining her, finding out how her people have been hunted and killed, nay, slaughtered. And your captain had been stalking Selichai's people, killing ruthlessly. She told you that she wouldn't kill you or the Landwalkers if you all did her one task. Kill Captain Three Earrings. Torn between two sides of the same grey coin, you boarded the ship once again, the Shogun close behind. You had thoughts of trees and the greater good. And so, you killed your captain. Stabbing her again and again before a shark body abomination finished her off. There is blood on your hands, but this time, it's different. This time, you had a choice. So now, again, you find yourselves on the deck of the Wave Chaser. Her body lays at your feet, blood pooling and seeping into the wood. What will you do next? Is everybody still up on the deck? Because when we last left off, I was um, attempting to comfort Heidi. Yes. Um, well, last time, you guys were, you had placed your hand on her. Um, everybody had kind of gone about to take their long rests um, and to level up. Um, 
if you would like to have a moment while you're still on deck prior to that, we absolutely can. Otherwise, we can go on as if it's the next morning. I'm okay uh, going on as if it's the next morning. As am I. Yep, same here. Okay. Okay. So you all awake after the encounter from yesterday. What do you do? I'm going to head out on deck, see who's already awake. I'm gonna make sure everybody's still alive. <laughs> yeah. Looking about um, in the quarters, you don't see any more bodies. Um, and uh, provided everybody is still sleeping or having just woken up, flocked that everybody is alive. Except for okay. the late Captain Three Earrings. Um, hearing Great. Brom leave the quarters, uh, Moonzik slowly gets out of uh, the hammock himself and makes his way to the deck and up uh, and over by Brom. Hey, Manzik. Good morning, Brom. I... How did you sleep last night? I know. I didn't think I would, to be honest. But I was so tired that my body betrayed me. I wish I could say the same, but I was tossing and turning quite a bit. It's the past 24 hours have weighed heavily on me. You can kind of see that with like, <laughs> with like very faint rings or uh, bags under his eyes, and like his you can tell his goatee is kind of like. Uh, like, almost like it's weighed down a little bit. I think we did the right thing overall. But... I'll be honest. I don't think I'm cut out for this. When I left, I was hoping to make some... coin doing something a little more dangerous. Such that I could rebuild my farm. And in five days, I've killed my first person, killed my first monster, and then had a hand in killing somebody I considered a friend. Or at the very least, an ally. Music kind of looks out over the uh, kind of like turns and looks out over the sea. <laughs> and very much kind of like a dramatic uh, stance. The world's not always so kind to those who wish to live upon it. No. But I always felt like my job was to be as kind to those around me as befits that kind of harsh world. Permission to be eavesdropping and drop it in the conversation. I mean, go for it. It's up to you. We're man. not hiding the conversation. <laughs> yeah. Hog. We're like so. We're like talking uh, by the my... fucking mast. Yeah. Um. It's, it's true. It's been a very rough twenty-four hours. Um, been a rough five days. That as well. This, especially these last day, though. <laughs> you know, um, I. It's, it's hard because we, we do what we must to survive, but sometimes you do something and wonder if you could have survived without doing it. Yeah. I want um, to go home. Moonzik will turn to Brahm again and say, Whatever happens going forward, whatever you decide to do, if, should you decide to go home to your children, I want you to remember 
not only us, but remember what's happened here today and to pass it on to your children to let them to make sure they know what the outside world is like. If you I will. And if you continue with us, don't forget who you are. We should hand over three earrings. Perhaps... I mean, I'll need the immunity if I want to go back home. I can't go go there and just get arrested. And perhaps whatever reward money is there will be enough for me to get a single plot of land started. Is is that what the crew wants? I think... I don't know, but... Like... The Wave Chaser crew, Heidi and them, I have no idea. They haven't really given any word at all, except for Dejarkle, but as for everyone, I think I think our group, or at least our, us three are in agreement of turning in three earrings. I can't imagine that them, that known pirates getting uh, pardons would be against their wishes, given their current situation. But didn't one of them not even realize that they were a pirate? Exactly. Hmm. Branded so for a crime you didn't know you were committing. How horrible. That is... It's admittedly pretty awful. However... Feels if, on summer ceremony. If we explain the circumstances of this, we just may get the pardon for everybody. Had to had to bring the captain in and in an attempt to calm the Sorgan attacks. It doesn't get revenge for Palma Flora or, or for Flora Isle, but we don't really need revenge. We just need peace. I'm. Listen, I, I'm not much for politics, but if I'm not mistaken, you're saying that we go, we go to, I'm, I'm sorry, we, we turn in her body and then immediately say, um, we've been helped by monsters. I, I, I'm, I'm worried about the backlash of... But we don't say it. If like... we want to get the pardon, we want to get the pardon. We should be as unproblematic as possible. I agree. I want the pardon, I've... but I also want—I don't want these attacks to recur again. Well, let's keep them separate. I mean, let's well, let's not explain her death that way. I. This is I'm, true. I'm, I'm, Monzik, I'm... we have we have figured out that, at the very least, the Sagwin will not attack again until further provoked. And we have made it clear that it would take time to create such a treaty that would prevent their hunting. They have said they will protect themselves, but not do any further attacks. All we are simply doing should be to say that we have negotiated some sort of ceasefire with the Sagwins such that they won't attack another town. I can't imagine that would go over negatively. This is Even if the Cove's Concord doesn't want... Uh, uh, even if the Clovis Concord doesn't want to stop fighting, they would certainly appreciate the time it would give them to marshal their forces. Again, I'd prefer peace, but that is not my decision to make. You have a fair point. I would hate to have done all this just for nothing to change. I have done a lot in my life and nothing has changed. Oh my god. Can you say that? <laughs> but that doesn't mean I haven't done good. And that doesn't mean there isn't great people and, and lives that you can touch and make better even without the grand scheme of things changing. I brought two wonderful children into this world. My lord didn't change, my town didn't grow. 
the sun didn't ri rise on the other side of the world that day. But I was a little happier for it. And I think they will be happier when they see me again. How old are your children? The oldest one uh, just turned uh, 13. Very proud of them. I hope he's nice. doing well with you being away, looking after the youngest sibling. I should be learning the rudimentaries of the forge, or sweeping up at least after my brother currently. Your brother works a forge? Yes, he's quite good. Never seen him craft weapons, though. If ah. you were interested mm. in that. Well. Not to say he couldn't, just. I was not. more. <laughs> he, Moonsa gets a, uh, has a smirk on his face. I was more or less interested in the fact if uh, he made you a pitchfork. He did. Well, for not making weapons. This pretty pitchfork. For, I was gonna say for making, uh, for not making any weapons, he does very good. Uh, he has very good craftsmanship. Yes, I'd agree with that. I was scared every time I uh, used this weapon that it would break, but it's not even got a crack down the haft. I'll have to thank him for paying such keen interest to his work, even when it was only ever meant to pitch hay. Unfortunately, we still have to worry about the money that you need to get, don't we? This is true. My budget for making it is still high, yes, but... I'm starting to consider what it might look like to start from a smaller funding. I think it's achievable, though, with all of us here. The people in the group. The ones that have been stuck on this chi ship since we met that day in the tavern. The... It wasn't a Denny's, I was disappointed. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. We need to go achievable. back to that someday. Achievable, maybe, but I don't want to kill another person to get it. I don't think that this group is going to be killing any more people anytime soon. Monsters, maybe, but I think maybe... I know that I'm definitely rethinking and rethinking and rethinking what I could have done better and learning from the situation. We just made a deal with the Sagwan. Five days ago, I'd have called that a monster through and through. What other monsters might we slay? That would be more people once talked to. Well, then why don't we talk to them? There are creatures that will attack you without a question, without even waiting for a response. All too aware of that. And, and when a when a person comes at you, this is an important fight back. question for me. Yes. Good. I have much to think about, and I'm sorry to put my heavy burdens on you. It is of no concern. Or it, is, it is of no worry. I am, I, I, I am not concerned at all with your situation. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is no it is of no problem. I as I said, I could not sleep very well last night either. A lot of things have happened and hopefully everything turns out okay. Yeah, my hammock cut like hitting a box. While we were under the ship, I, I couldn't get to sleep either. <laughs> but, what um, are Edward, Winchime, and Miles doing? It? 
I mean, how early is it in the morning? Yes. I would say it's late morning. You guys probably slept. It was the middle of the night when this all happened, so um, it's probably 10, 11. Okay, Edward is going to be sitting in his hammock thinking about plans on what we do next and also thinking about where the potential clue of his parents' uh, whereabouts are going to be from, you know, in Pomaflora. Uh, yeah. What's Winchime doing? Winchime just woke up. <laughs> Miles? Uh... Miles is still lightly sleeping. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. You guys are just chilling. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, Edward is gonna come up on deck. Uh, he's going to, you know, greet everybody. Um, he's gonna say, uh, so have we decided what we wanted to do? As of now, yet. I've been mulling over some of the potential decisions that we could probably do. But I think we're all unanimous. At least I'd like to think that we're all in unanimous agreement about uh, turning in the body of Captain Three Earrings for, in return for amnesty to the crew members and to us. And potentially pursuing an avenue of... Uh, negotiating peace talks with you know the Chagwin and the you know residents holding shark hunting festivals <laughs> Moonzik gives a slow nod don't you think I was so excited about that shark Well, what do you think are the other options? You said that we had come to an agreement on one, but you had been mulling over others? Well, I was thinking that... How are we going to negotiate some form of peace talk with them? Is there some particular method we can employ to contact somebody with the appropriate authority to be able to outlaw these shark hunting festivals? Hmm. Muzik would like to roll a history check to see... Like, he, he has, like, some understanding of the clue of his Concord. Um, he wants to see if he can recall, like, who might be the best person to talk to in that regard. Okay. Go ahead and roll a history check. Ooh. So, you you don't know who to talk to, but, you know, being being the Menagerie Coast as is, um, you're pretty certain that it's whoever they are probably in Port Tamale. Well, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head who we might be able to talk to, but I know there's quite a... Uh, quite a there, there's probably someone in Port Tamale or somewhere in the area of there that we can. I'm willing look to bet Dejarkal would know who to talk to. That's also a strong likelihood, as she is in the Clovis Concord. That's actually quite insightful. I think I might have to go discuss this further. If I'm being honest, I really don't want to neglect the particular avenue of not ensuring that peace comes to Selichai and her people. Not I why, we... but one step at a time. I agree. I mean, for now, there's one particular problem that's been occupying my mind that I haven't been able to get restful sleep ever since. It's actually the reason why I'm here. Yeah? So, I'm I'm sure you guys probably know this. I'm I'm in search currently of the disappearances, the whereabouts of my parents. 
apparently they left me a particular clue alluding to the fact that something could be ha something could have been found in Pamaflora and that's why I went there and departed from my home in order to search for this clue. Well, I think the problem is is you know, the entire place is under the water now. Well which makes it harder. Flora Isle is underwater, yes, but Palma Flora as a city is still very much alive. It is... We could still go there and take a look at whatever you want to take a look at. Okay, I think we could definitely do that once we make our departure for land. You think we should probably ask Dejaco about any appropriate authorities we can contact to turn in Captain Three Earrings? That would probably be a good course of action, but at the same time I think I think everyone aboard the ship needs to have a council with each other to see where we all lie. Not the least of which, because none of us know how to sail. And yes. all our talk about where we should go means nothing if we can't actually get there. I agree. Very Sorry very for my lack of insightfulness towards all this. Um, wh when do you think would be an appropriate time to uh, hold this discussion? Well, Why we're not now? I suppose the sooner the better. Everyone's minds might not be made up yet, but we we can't just stay out here dead in the water. We only have limited supplies. I suppose I think we should probably initiate discussions with him. All right. Yes. Which is what we're doing right now. Which is why we're talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we all uh, stand there talking about it for 20 we're minutes. Walking, we're walking over <laughs> to wherever they are. <laughs> what? Are we going to have like this discussion over breakfast? Or Animal, something? are you okay? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Is anybody uh, making yeah, breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's uh, done shit! <laughs> I don't think this is probably... Uh, Animal would like to make can... breakfast. <laughs> Mooji oh would God. like to make breakfast as well. Okay. So, we're, we're, okay. we're doing the cruise chores today. We're we're being the nice guys. Okay. Yes, breakfast um. with a side of existential dread to reopen the realization <laughs> that you're pirates. Breakfast so with there a... are a couple of... Oh my God. There's a couple of things that you, that you all notice. Um, as, you know out of your reverie and um, into being a little bit more aware of your surroundings. Um, one, you do not know where the captain's body is. Oh. Last you all saw, it was in on basically the center of the deck of the wave chaser. Um, it is not there anymore. However, you do see... Um, uh, Dilly you, um, over in that area on his hand at the, at the deck. Um, you don't know, you have not encountered where Heidi might um, and you, uh, uh, can hear a, uh, um, a pretty, a pretty faint, uh, like, hammering, just like, like a, like, choom, 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 uh, thunk. Um, that's pretty repetitive. Um, and you think that's coming from back below deck. Um, you all also, uh, being moonsick and wind chime do hear the chink, 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 uh, the consistent beating. Um, you remember. That uh, while you were in um, in the crew's quarters, um, Dejarkel was still asleep. Um, Borth is up by the uh, 
um, by the by the stern of the ship, um, just looking about, doing his thing. So on the top of the ship, you see uh, Diliu and um, Borth, and um, you don't know. You hear a, a, a hammering from below deck. And you know where Diliu... Excuse me, you know that Desharkle is still sleeping. Okay. Um, I'd like to go to the captain's quarters. Okay. Um, you uh, go to the captain's quarters. It is unlocked. I go inside. Alrighty. Is, is you... You walk into the captain's quarters and you see um, the uh, the the dead body of uh, Captain Three Earrings placed on her bed, wrapped up in uh, you know in her own blankets and things. Um, the uh, the big gash uh, slash missing chunk of skin um, is covered up at the moment though you're keenly aware of its existence she just it looks like somebody positioned her in a way that she's been sleeping Mm -hmm. around the room it's a pretty familiar sight Um, you've been in here a couple of times Um, and with your passive perception, nothing seems out of place. What if I roll an investigation? <laughs> Absolutely. What are you investigating? I'm 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 searching the office for anything that'll help me learn how to sail. <laughs> hey. Quinn, it's a cool. Go ahead. Mist. Roll me in a roll me an investigation check. God damn it! So it's a twelve. Um, it turned. You see a couple of things. One, um, there is a, a desk um, that you have seen uh, Captain Three Earrings um, a sitting at a couple of times. You know that there's a desk. Um, <laughs> and you see that there is a map of the Menagerie Coast um, pinned to it. You can see it here. This is basically what it looks like. There appears to be uh, trace paths um, of where the ship um, possible places for the ship to go amongst them um, as if for any of the islands and um, other coastal regions you do have like a pretty clear path of where they go um, on the sh- if you behind the desk is a um, is a bookshelf with a variety of books um, some of them in in a different language that you're not familiar with um, and, uh, uh, but there seems to be, you know, a handful that have vague names, such as sailing, accounting, <laughs> and, uh, uh, the, the buying and, uh, the buying and trading of various spices. Um, so. Uh, I would like to take a book on sailing. On sailing, and, you have... and I would like to take the least um, grandeur-looking book that is written in a different language. Absolutely. Um, you pull down uh, a book on sailing. It's not very big. Uh, you open it up. There's a lot of diagrams in it. Um, and a good chunk of lingo that you're not, like, super familiar with, but a couple of things that you do recognize, like the mizzen mast and the crow's nest and the stern and, like, a variety of just, like, terms. Um, but flipping through, it, it appears to just be a lot of, like, diagrams um, with blurbs and things in it. Um, and it doesn't look like it's well used. It looks like it's been sitting up there for like a while, um, and all of its papers, uh, like the the pages in it, um, they kind of like sometimes stick together a little bit, um, as it appears that she didn't really need it. Um, that makes sense. The book that you pick up that's in a different language um, 
it is extraordinarily well worn. Um, it's like a leather bound book, book with um, something written across the uh, um, the spine. You flip it open, and in deep contrast to the book that on sailing that you have. Um, this one looks like it has been puzzled through and um, there's stains inside of it. Lots of pages are doggy eared and um, and crinkled from from a lot of use. Mm. <laughs> doggy eared, she has a month uh, flipping flipping through it, um, it it mostly a lot of a lot of words. Um, there <laughs> no are <diagram. laughs> occasionally, like, if you, when you, when you flip to the back of the book, you do notice there appears to be a n kind of a translation guide is in the back, which is convenient, uh, but you're going to have to puzzle more through, um, at a, at a different time to, right. um, figure out. Then you don't, you have no, in uh, you can roll an intelligence check, uh, you could say history check. Yeah, you roll a history? history check, and I'll let you know if you can figure out what language it is. Uh, it's you're not really sure the the syntax of the language is not something you're could familiar be with. Elven, you're not super. Could be yeah, you're like, you're not you're not super familiar with languages, but um, you do find it. I I know one. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is written in languages. Uh, yes, yeah. this is written in Let's words. Let's go. Uh, I could tell. Uh, and then I'd let it. It appears to use the alphabet. Breakfast. <laughs> a alphabet. Like to leave and cook breakfast, and, okay. and give like a a nod to Captain Earrings. Close my eyes, you know. Thank okay. you for the books. Animo and Music are going to make the best fucking breakfast ever. Um. Before we go on to that, is there anything that Windchime and Miles are doing? Are you guys still just chilling, or would you like to do something? Um, for now, yeah. Windchime? I don't know, she goes out on the deck. And like, like. <laughs> see, you see the scene from before, Dilly, you, um, on his hands and knees, scrubbing up where the body of Captain Thomas was. Um, and you pass... You pass um, Moonsick and um, and Anemo heading down below. Up on deck, you do see um, Edward and I presume Braun as well, um, <laughs> looking and meandering about. All right, um, Edward is, at this time is going to try to like you know gather all the like you know crewmates of the Wave Chaser. Uh, you know, he's gonna see, like, Diliu, like, you know, scrubbing at the stain on, uh, you know, the, the, the deck. Uh, he's gonna look up at Diliu. He's gonna say, uh, I, I, I know it must be hard on you. I'm really sorry how things turned out. Uh, I'm gonna cast Unseen Servant. Um, and then I'm going to say, it's okay, you don't have to... Trouble yourself with cleaning this up. I'll I'll handle it. The we're we're going to have a gathering and we're going to have a discussion about what we want to do moving forward. I know we can't drift in the ocean forever. Could you possibly, at your earliest convenience, when we gather, uh, be of attendance of this discussion? You see, um, Diliu stop scrubbing, and. Um look up at you, and he says, um, well, I, su I suppose I could, um, yeah, but I can, I can go gather everybody, um, and, uh, he says, everybody's kind of doing their own thing at the, um, I want to say half an hour or so. Half an hour? Where do you want to be? On the deck of the ship. <laughs> That's where most meetings are kept. All right, just. All right, thank you. Wind uh, and... at yeah. the flood. Um, 
the the blood stain on the deck with wide eyes, and she asks, "Where did she go?" Are you asking me? Yeah, Dilly, where is is where is she? I think I forgot to do something really important actually last night. Well, I think I think Heidi took her into the captain's quarters. She okay. was with her all night. Windchim hurries down to the captain's quarters to like see the body. Um, you see the same scene I described before. Um, nothing appears to amiss. You do actually. What's your passive perception? Uh, let me look. Where would that be on the thing? Just your character sheet skills. should be on the left hand yeah. Scott. Left hand yeah, side. Under your skill proficiencies. Between your skills and two? the two fish yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, your passive. Your passive perception would be twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Um, you you do I would yeah I would say you notice the uh, um you you notice mostly just the body of Captain Three Earrings um and uh, uh you see her you know eyes eyes shut and um, draped in blankets covering the spot that you know the bite was right is. Is it too late to perform um, gentle repose on her? Absolutely not. Okay, that's what uh, Winchem goes to do then. In a hurry. <laughs> You're casting it as a ritual? Yeah. Okay, so you don't have to remove a spell slot. You spend the next ten minutes um, with, the, uh, with the body of Captain Three Earrings. Um, Performing a uh, a taught ritual that you're here with, um, in order to stop her from continuing to use. Yep. Okay. While you're doing that, um, we'll go to Anemo and Moonzik. Hell yeah! Um, you make you make your way um, down below deck, and um, and to where the uh, uh, the galley is, uh, where you've been, uh, um, where you've been cooking, uh, you do see uh, as you open the door um, to just to the left of you is Heidi. Um, she looks like shit. I mean, she really you could. She looks very disheveled in a way that you've never seen her disheveled before. Uh, with big puffy eyes and um, uh, uh, deep deep bags, um, her face is completely lax. There's no expression, and she's uh, appears to be working using some of the uh, uh, the boxes and things that had previously held stuff um, to make some sort of wood box. Um, pretty easy to pres presume that she is attempting to make a sort of casket with the scrap pieces of wood. You do see, like, there are, um, like, scattered about, like, there's some rope um, that appears to just have been dumped out. Um, there's uh, a bunch of ballista uh, uh, bolts that also are just kind of dumped about, scattered. Uh, you see, as the ship rocks one way, one of the uh, ballista bolts kind of roll to the other side. Um... And uh, she is working, and um, but if you choose to ignore her, you can make your way into the the galley. Um, Animo, do you want to go ahead? I'll catch up with you. Oh shit! I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, what do you mean? I, I just said... Alright, um... Uh... 
No, I was I was gonna I was gonna clean up around her. Okay. That's what I wanted to do. I was just, I just wanted to make sure she was okay, so maybe we we'll can do just, that together. Yeah. We'll just take a couple minutes and comfort her a little bit and then clean up as well. So yeah. Moonsa kind of approaches uh, Heidi and and he says, Good morning, Heidi. She glances up at you and looks like makes eye contact and then looks back down at what she's doing. Um, you can see like there's some pictures and picks it out um, and goes back to um, to beating a nail in. Have have you slept at all, Heidi, since last night? Um, she, like, looks up to you and kind of shrugs. And <laughs> Sorry, she's not the most, like, talkative person at the moment, I, but... Like, like, I understand, like, Moonsuk understands, like, from the body language and everything, like, he can get the sense, like, he, she probably did not sleep at all. And at the same time, as much as he would like her to get some rest... He knows that he probably can't convince her of that right now. Well. But yeah. Um, he just kind of shrugs. Well, Heidi, we're, Animo and I will kind of help clean up a little bit around here so we don't have to worry about that later. And then we're going to go make some breakfast for everybody, okay? She... She doesn't make eye contact with you as she nods her head and goes back to making her box. <laughs> Music turns to Animo. Right then, shall we? He just nods, starts picking up everything, trying to find places for them. Or they won't just roll around. <laughs> yeah. Grab, grabbing the grabbing the ball bearings, thinking, God, where the ballistics? <laughs> uh, where, where the fuck? Did, I do not. I not on this. Um, but you know, he's figuring it out. You kind of like take a piece of rope and you kind of tie them all together and just like say, just lay them down <laughs> in a bundle. Um, That's good enough. You see, you, you, I you put see the, I uh, the, the ropes around the ballistics so they don't go anywhere. Yeah. Um. <laughs> And uh, Moonzik, you, 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 if if you don't mind, you just kind of pick up some of the uh, uh, the pieces of wood that are kind of scattered about. Like the, it, it appears to be like crates that she has like disassembled. Yeah. Um, and so you kind of like move them all in a pile near her. Yeah. You know, it looks more tidy. It, it's always a little bit chaotic in here. More tidy for Heidi. But... Yeah, wow. <laughs> oh, I'm going to hell. All right, let's let's go make some breakfast. Let's, let's go I make the best that breakfast. Like that. Let's, I mean, at this time, like, could Edward like gather the party mem not the Wave Chasers crew, but like you know the other party members to like you know meet on the deck in half an hour. So Miles, we're busy. Yeah, Miles, oh. Windsheim. Which yeah, I'm so, already on the deck. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. You well, wanna what? so what you basically wanna do is inform everybody, kind of go down yeah. and just like hey wanted to let you know okay. you can if you would like to Yeah. <laughs> as as we stroll into the galley, uh moon success to the animo, we're going to make a Denny's breakfast. As you oh as God. you as you do, you do see um um Killiu <laughs> is kind of sitting there with uh like one arm tucked underneath uh his his left arm kind of tucked underneath his uh his right his uh right hand kind of like rubbing his chin a little bit as he's like looking about. Dilly he or sees Kijori? you. Uh, he, 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 Kajori, excuse me. He, he said excuse kill me. you, and I'm like. Who the f- <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> 
don't know what was going on with Every, with Everybody Dr. wants to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> you like, uh, combined Jory and Dill you into one name and it really fucking threw me <laughs> off. So sorry. So sorry. Kajori. <laughs> Uh, Kajori, like, you know, looks at you as you, uh, as you mention, uh, uh, <laughs> like, Denny's, and you see, like, a little, like, a little light in his eyes as he's, I, I haven't, uh, I haven't been to a Denny's in a while. Oh, man. There was this, this woman, she, she tended to this, uh, this Denny's near my place back home. Man, she was, she was wonderful. Ugh. Wait a second. Tell me, where, where was the Denny's near your home? Oh, um, just not too far from, uh, 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 uh I'm No kidding. So, the lady that you're talking about was the, ah, wasn't she, she was the Dragonborn lady, wasn't she? No, no, oh, no. That wasn't from Pomaflora. That was... Ah, darn it. Yes. She's the one who was turned into a... Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to remember, uh... Oh, shoot, really? She's that chick that got fucking turned into a monster! Hell yeah! <laughs> no! no. <laughs> that, was, that was out of character. Like, Bright I'm trying to remember what... Immediately I'm trying to remember what uh, race that, waitre that uh, uh, waitress was. A I, human. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she was a human. I thought she was something else. I thought she was a dragonborn, bronze dragon, or copper dragon. No, that that, 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 that we, that we just went over we this. We saw yeah. turned into one, into yeah, a. Yeah. So uh, the the tender no, but, in failing. No, but but the, Rocky, the bartender. Rocky seen it. The the uh. The bartender in Palmaflora was a. The dragonborn. bartender in Palmaflora. Yeah, the bartender in was a dragonborn. The bartender for the Denny's <laughs> in Feolin, um, that you guys are familiar with, uh, she was human. Hell yeah. Ah, yes, then I know exactly mm. who you're talking about. We I... may have been fortunate enough to meet her. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> oh, isn't she a beauty? Oh, absolutely. Oh, small uh, world. Small world indeed. I I remember waking up on uh, several mornings and going to the Denny's and having a conversation with her. You know, I once proposed to her. You did not. I did. I did <laughs> propose to her. Yeah. No, she. She turned me down. Uh, I still not. I try not to keep. Uh, I, I still like to keep my hopes up. Maybe one day I'll go back and... But she's just so caught up with her job. <laughs> <laughs> Moonzik gives a smirk. You know, you could go back to her and say that uh, you've really grown up and made your, made your way as a pirate. She might uh, swoon over that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, pirate. I still I, can't believe that. Impressive, no? impressive, sure, but she seems... I don't know... <laughs> I really haven't done much, like, it's hard to call myself a pirate. It's just a weird feeling. Uh, well, yeah. you can prove it. You can go and you can see her and then the Clovis Convoy can try and ca ca catch you and then, you know, she'll know. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm sorry. I got you, it. You, she's you a see... pirate, but now she's, re uh, she's he's a pirate, but now he's retired. <laughs> um, you see, the, like at at mention awful. of the Columbus Concord, his his face kind of drops, and um, yeah, no, maybe. And uh, I, I, I wanna, I, I, I wanna, I wanna say, I'm, I'm sorry, and then say, well, we're gonna make a Denny's breakfast. Is is, yeah? it, is it something that you'd be interested in helping with? I mean. I, I would love to. I was just planning on cooking myself. I know it's a little bit late in the day, but... You know. Well, we uh, we were going to cook for everybody, so... Let's all three make a, make, make, make a grand effort towards it. Let me look up Denny's breakfast menu again. <laughs> <laughs> we just... <laughs> There just happens oh, to be a oh. Denny's breakfast menu on board, like, posted to one of the walls. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually uh, written it down in a, in, in, 
<laughs> it's in. That's actually what the 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 book that uh, that I don't. Yeah. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Eric spent the entire time with. <laughs> um, you. Uh, he says. He says to you all. Um, well, I'd love to make a traditional, like a traditional Denny's breakfast, but uh, we don't have any eggs. Oh, what? Hmm. What do you uh, mean they... we can't make Denny's bennies? <laughs> I'm as much as I too love Denny's bennies. Eggs don't <laughs> keep well on the ship. Oh, hmm, well, that's, uh, that's awful. Well, Cannon, Cannon hates this. <laughs> what? Uh, historically, um, if you had a single Frenchman on the ship. He'd pay, he'd get really mad at that because uh, there's actually an event where uh, you know uh, the English um, an English sailor got on a French ship um, and was served a breakfast of eggs despite them being uh, you know like six months out at sea and he was like how the hell do you have eggs. You know, did you just stock up? And they're like, what? They keep. He's like, no, they don't. They go rotten. Uh, you can paint uh, eggs with wax. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, that's didn't keep on didn't, didn't know that. Sure. But Jory doesn't know that either. So. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> it, 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 rare tech, but like, a Frenchman would be <laughs> like, excuse me? <laughs> well, listen, listen. Listen, I have a... Uh... I have an idea. I remember they had these <laughs> cinnamon roll pancake breakfast. <laughs> Where the hell are you going to get cinnamon? That sounds pretty good to me. I... We get the cinnamon roll uh, pancakes. We get the uh, hash browns on the side. A little bit of bacon, a little bit of sausage. Uh, we're golden. I think that that is a wonderful idea. I actually do have some cinnamon. Um, you see, he... <laughs> He does, um, like, he has spices and things. Um, he, he says, I don't, I don't use it quite often, but, um, I'll tell you a secret. This will be the only act of, like, thieving that I, that I have done. But, uh, we were shipping some cinnamon not too long ago, and, uh, I took a couple. Um, see, you, you do see, know uh, what like, you're doing. Uh, you yeah. see, there's like a, a couple of little <laughs> um you see there is like he pulls out like um like two small little sacks of cinnamon they're small like you know no bigger than uh, the size of your hand but he does have two of them which is quite a lot of cinnamon <laughs> <laughs> well, and we're going to use all of it we're not going to use all of it. Mrs. Price wants to use all of it. Um, <laughs> Have you ever heard of the cinnamon challenge? <laughs> no. What is the cinnamon challenge? Oh God! Are you throwing nugget through? Well, I'm sorry. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> you throw a nugget through? <laughs> well, where I grew up, we uh, we had this challenge where you took a uh, spoonful of cinnamon and you put it in your mouth and you try not to cough it out again. Basically, you waste cinnamon for no reason and possibly suffocate yourself. Oh, that sounds it's absolutely you horrendous. Put cinnamon through your mouth. I, uh, I bet you, I bet you we could get Borth to do it. Oh, no. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I think that Another, he, another day. He... Wait, 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 wait. I have an idea. It's between us three. Um, what right. if, alongside everyone's breakfast, we also include a spoonful of cinnamon, and we have to do it where this style of breakfast, it's a, it's tradition, to start it off with a spoonful of cinnamon. No. This is oh, a terrible God. idea. Do we even have enough cinnamon for that? <laughs> we absolutely have enough cinnamon for that. <laughs> no! You two, come on. <laughs> I, I, look. I I <laughs> I think it's just what we need to lift the spirits. Uh, do, do, can we at least get them a ton of drink? 
<laughs> yes, of course. Oh, absolutely. I think that uh, <laughs> after the events of last night, I think that uh, we could use some booze this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Where are pirates? <laughs> <laughs> Now that I don't have uh, the captain telling me we can't drink all day, <laughs> why not? You can you cannot tell me with a straight face that the dude just mentioned the fact that the captain wasn't there as a good thing. You you take that back immediately, DM. That is not what happened. He, no, he, that did he not absolutely happen. said it. He absolutely yep. said no. It. He yep. did not. Yep. No, he's in his rebellious teenager phase. Yep. Uh, roll, he roll he for... just he he made a joke just like you guys did. Roll for insight. Roll for insight. Roll for insight. Roll for charisma against roll the DM. For insight. Okay. Charisma. DM. Roll charisma. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> roll charisma. Roll charisma, and that'll dictate how funny yeah, this is. Yeah, you. You can tell that he is joking and is absolutely distraught oh. over having lost the captain. <laughs> Not as distraught as others, but he he is he's taking everything in stride. He's putting on a smile because it's not he, a competition he, he looks, about how distraught he, one is. He looks he like he is he's upset, but he's... um he also has the awareness of himself to be able to make jokes and function. Uh. <laughs> um, you also notice with a 17 that you have a feeling that he is he is trying to get on your good side Aww. I don't mind that ulterior motive much yeah, yeah he's, he is explicitly trying to trying to get on your good side so I noticed that Cool. <laughs> as as the uh, as the futuristic kids would say, poggers. Maybe he's worried uh, that we're gonna kill him like we did his captain. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um, <laughs> oh no. He uh, he says, "Shall we begin?" Let's All right. Do, let's do this. Everybody. Roll a, uh, you can roll a survival or a performance check. Survival or performance. Survival has, that's awful. I hate that. A seven. It's going to be survival for me. Oh, yeah, that's right. I oh, no. So. That's a seven. <laughs> that's we a got two sevens in a row. Oh, We're not no. rolling above a seven, are we? Okay, so. Having, survival a, or. Having the cinnamon challenge along with this breakfast, it's going to be a fucking slap to the face. This is a horrible idea. <laughs> hey, cinnamon so, is hey, we have a cook be with comfort, us. right? Oh, I don't know why I rolled well, a Well, that's a nat 20. 20. I, don't know I don't know why you rolled. You're not even there. Yeah, I don't fucking... <laughs> well, I guess that's not a roll. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. No, we'll take it. We'll take it. I no. have been... He whispers, he, he hits the deck too hard and something really fucking tasty goes into a pot and it just... <laughs> No, no, it's like Sanji. He just passes out and just he just mutters whatever about cooking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Actually, that nat twenty was for the rat that's on my head. <laughs> oh, okay then. <laughs> oh, you guys. I'm so sorry. sorry. I heard everybody do this, so it's like, oh, we're we're taking the cinnamon challenge right now. Don't know what oh, yeah. I'm not on. Okay. Right at um, <laughs> Can, no, can, no, no, no. Can, okay. can my can my twenty four help them make me a good breakfast? <laughs> or I... or at the very least, can it make it taste delicious to me because I have no understanding of what is good Whoops. food? There we go. I will I will I say do anything up. your your survival check was not um, go overboard. <laughs> <laughs> your your survival check lets you know. Uh, so it has nothing to do with food, <laughs> so, um, but it lets you right. know that uh, you notice uh, that uh, it appears to be the the place that you know out, just outside of the shark feather mist. You know you haven't been moving, um, mm -hmm. but you notice you know that you could probably like uh, you know use a rope or maybe a long stick to 
to pick up some of the debris that's floating around the area. If you wanted, you notice. Yeah. You know, you, you could. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to pick up the to do with debris it. that you just randomly gave me. <laughs> okay, so... You... <laughs> Okay, so I, I I have I have consequences <laughs> for my actions. Okay, uh, you take the or rope. It's fine because he's not an artificer, so he can't actually do anything with it. Um, you take a rope that was dangling still off the side of the ship, and you kind of pick it. You pull it a couple of times. You make like a loop, uh, and you are able to fish up a piece of uh, plank wood, like just like wood debris. Driftwood. Yeah, um, nice. If you get so three you more of these, you can create a... more of the ship. And then this <laughs> will come right. Um, now you have a rather, you know, probably a six or seven foot tall, you know, big chunk of Yay, wood. driftwood. Um, <laughs> and you just pull that shit up on deck. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Not sure I, am, really I am going to pose proudly with it. <laughs> for what? <laughs> this oh, will be forged so into the finest spear so that I could move on from my <laughs> my days of using this pitchfork. <laughs> um. So back on back on track here. You guys, you know, get set to cooking. Um. You will say. Uh, Trusting you with the knife skills that he has taught uh, taught you last time with filleting a fish, he sends you onto the potatoes. Thank you, everybody. You know, um, he uh, he inch he <laughs> yes, sure. Um, you uh, he says, all right, you have to. It's a pe do you have to you have to slice these up into small thin strips. Um, the smaller, the better, and they'll cook a little easier that way. Think you can do that? But of course. Okay, so you you get you get set to cutting, and you, you don't peel you, like you start peeling a couple of them, and then like your thumb hurts from like pressing up against it. Um, so you just start slicing, and most of the time when you when you start slicing them up, you you try to cut off the little chunks that. Uh, have skin on them, but uh, there's a lot of skin in this. Um, and the pieces that you cut are just a little too thick. Um, I but hate you don't know that. <laughs> um, I, I, I prefer the way too thin, but, you know, that's alright. <laughs> um, that's just a mush. Uh, <laughs> fucking mush. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, mashed potato. And then he... he he comes over to you, Moonzig. He uh, he starts, uh, you know, putting some flour, sugar, um, just a variety of things to make like a, a, a pseudo dough, um, and uh, tells you to um, to mix it, leave it to rest, you know. Ah, yes. Then come back through and form it. Ah, yes. Um, I'm going to make uh, my mother's. Uh... <laughs> My my mother's famous uh, breakfast dough. Um, as you do that, you forget to leave it to like rest, so it ends up coming out really dense. <laughs> 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 like not like crazy. You did leave it to rest for a, a little bit of time, but not for as long as it should have been. Not for the full thirty minutes. Well, with a failed right? performance check, you just try to flip the pancakes, and one of them just folds in half. <laughs> it's a pancake. I thought it was cinnamon rolls. It's cinnamon rolls, bro. No, 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 no. no. Flip those too. Oh, it's cinnamon, cinnamon pancakes. Roll, that's right, it's cinnamon and pancakes. Cake breakfast. I, cinnamon I... roll pancakes. <laughs> Absolutely. It's okay. Both, so, my dude. Um, and you guys all get set to work after after all this. <laughs> this is Denny's. It is you edible. Denny's just serves regular cinnamon. Rolls. <laughs> they're edible. Um, they're edible. It's it's not bad. Um, the even after, like, flying them to Chris, um, <laughs> the hash browns appear to be a little, a little more, um, crunchy, Ooh. and not in the good way, oh. right? They're a little undercooked. 
uh, like not fully cooked all the way through. Like there's just a couple like you try a bite and then you kind of like kind of crunch into um, semi raw potato and you're like, well, it doesn't taste that bad, but it make dries out your mouth. Um, and the dough for the the pancakes they're they're more they're definitely cinnamon. They taste cinnamony, um, but they're 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 pretty dense. Um, not fluffy like you had intended, um, but altogether it is it is a meal. It's edible. You're pretty lucky that uh, Kajori is, is is really good at cooking. I'll just say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you guys have to the next you know thirty minutes or so cooking up, doing your thing, um, and yeah. Miles, what are you doing? The brick. What? You just cut out. Turned up. Kyle? Kyle? Yeah, I'm here. You... Cut out really bad. Like we didn't even hear a single. Because I turned up my stuff because I kept echoing and stuff. Oh. Which I shouldn't be echoing at all, but I still am for some reason. Anyways, um, with the smell of the breakfast in the air, Miles will poke his head up and kind of start making his way up deck. Nice. Um. In short order, everybody um, appears on deck as you guys start to to carry your uh, your the made breakfast up. Most of the time, people come down for breakfast, but um, I think you all agreed serving it up on deck would be um, ideal. As you guys are carrying the hash browns and pancakes, um, you pass uh, do, you pass uh, Heidi who uh, seems to be ever closer to finishing her box. Um, she glances up at you um, and kind of goes back to work. She seems really focused. Um, but you make your way up on deck and everybody is gathered. Except for Heidi? or Yeah, except for Heidi. Except for Heidi. So, you're probably wondering why I gathered you all here today. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Oh, sorry, I had to say that. <laughs> right now, I know that this crew is quite distraught by the loss of, loss of its captain, and I know we didn't particularly get enough time to mourn her properly for her passing. But I was wondering on what we should do to decide our next course of action going forward. Possibly, you know, our immediate course of action on whether or not we should, uh... Where, I, I'm, I'm just wondering on what particular courses of action we can do, whether or not you guys are okay with are making some sort of arrangement with the Clovis Concord to exchange the body of the late captain for amnesty for you guys so that you don't face persecution. I know not most of this crew aren't... I, I know some members of this crew aren't actually aware of the fact that they were, were. pirates. And I'm not really... I, I, I think that we still possibly have a chance or at least some form of leverage against the Clovis Concord to grant you guys protection from persecution. Um, Kajori says, Wait, we were pirates? <laughs> He's got, he smiles. He's, he made a joke. <laughs> he made a um, joke! <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> yes, I, as far as the crew is aware, at least I request complete honesty with our uh, intentions going forward. No more of this 
betrayal. I don't want to lose another person through deception. Most of you guys were mostly tasked without, uh, with doing general menial labor chores, such as hauling around uh, crates and cargo to be bartered or traded off to in different parts as you were sailing. Are we correct? I mean, no. I'm the bozeman. Kajori, I mean, he's the cook. Heidi's the navigator and first mate. Um, Dejarkel and uh, Dilliu were pretty new, but uh, um, Dejarkel's taken the greenhorn, and uh, Dilliu has been my uh, second bozeman. I mean... When in the in the context of this uh, statement, I mean, like most of the crew here uh, weren't really, you know, the the primary purpose of this ship itself was to move cargo around ports and whatnot and engage in trade. Is that correct? Yeah, most of what we did was that. Yes. Uh, I mean, how many of the crew members here were aware of that this fact, uh, this ship was in fact uh, part of the revelry? The Sharkle raises her hand. <laughs> so does uh, Borth. Just those two? Mm -hmm. hmm. Heidi's kind of off doing her own uh, thing. I'm going to ask, what about Heidi? Was she aware of this fact? Of course. Yes. Sorry. Yes, Heidi was aware. Okay. So, of the crew members, uh, three of them were aware, and one of them, it's uh, one of them was working for the Clovis Concord as a spy. Is that correct? I mean, I'm working for the Clovis. I'm more of a mercenary. You were still employed by the Clovis Concord. Yeah, I guess you're right. All right, so going forward, I know granting amnesty is up in the question, and it's a bargain. I, I was considering whether or not it would be a good decision in order to let the... You know, I, I was considering whether or not it would be a good decision to either just drop us off and then have ourselves, uh, you know negotiate with the Clovis Concord, or would it be appropriate for you guys to also show up to the Clovis Concord and turn yourselves in? Because in doing so, I acknowledge that there is a risk, especially among the ones that were aware that this boat was part of the revelry. Oddly enough, um, it is Dilyu who speaks up first. Um, he says, Look, I don't... I don't really want to go back. Um, I think it's probably best if I stay on the ship. Are there any objections to... what Dilly has said? Uh, but, yeah, um... Dejarkel, she'll, she'll say... I... I think it's probably best if I go with you. I agree. I do think you would be granted amnesty regardless on the basis that you were employed by them in the first place. Um, but I think we're in unanimous agreement that the crew members excluding the Jarkul would not turn themselves in on the mainland and would instead drop us off and allow us to depart so that we may negotiate with them. Is that what's best for us? I have one other thing to put out there. In regards to the captaincy of this ship, it would naturally fall to the first mate, but at the current po uh, at the uh, current moment, I don't think Heidi is in any condition to captain. Well, out of the members here, Borth, I'm sure Borth actually has the second most amount of experience uh, with the Wave Chaser, and amongst that, I think Borth was closer 
with Captain Three Earrings than everyone excluding Heidi. I do think that we could possibly elect Worth to gain temporary ownership of this boat until least some arrangements or negotiations are made when Heidi's in a more clear state of mind to do so. Look, I appreciate, but I don't know anything about being a captain. I'm more of a do-as-told kind of guy. I'm not good with decision. Unless we're playing a game. In that case, I'm... I don't know, well, it's not something I'm familiar with. Well, well, alright. Let's, first of all, let us get to shore. Can we get headed there? I mean, I'm not really good at sailing myself, but, you know, I've been trying to learn. <clears throat> we do run the risk of being caught by another one of those Clovis Concord ships. I'm not sure they would let us immediately explain our way out. I think it'd be safer. Well, then the sooner we get the better. If we get, caught, we if we get caught by one of the ships, run up the white flag and explain the situation. I'm sure they'll have. We'll have the chance. Jaco, do you happen to have any contact with any members of the Clovis Concord through any telepathic or arcane means? He, guys, um, this is, I know this is important, but why not just head there as soon as possible? The more that we wait around, the more likely we are to be caught. I mean, I do intend to head back as soon as we have all of this orders and affairs sorted out first. I mean, I've mostly, I've been, I've been in contact with them by, um, by an animal messenger, I just kind of have one of the one of the seagulls take my message away. Nothing direct, but it's close. I haven't I haven't yet put out a, a report of her death or anything else that has gone on I figured it would probably be in my best interest to wait um I really want to do a little bit of player talk am I allowed to because it makes no sense for my character to say any of what I want to say I don't care go for it but um There are, like, three things we need from this conversation. We need to... It, it, like, moving forward, um, it's pretty clear that uh, we need to get access to the ship in terms of, look, this is probably our best chance of having a, a ship as the party in terms of Stronghold and Followers girls. Um, you know, we do have a claim to it. Uh, less so than Heidi, but maybe, and maybe not on a moral ground, but we definitely have the claim in terms of power, and if we can, in some way, convince uh, the crew to follow us, we'll have a ship. I mean, there's no, like, you know, it's not off the table that we can convince the crew to become, you know, an acquaintance or an ally so that we have access to, you know, a capable crew right. that can manage a ship. Right. I what I'm saying is like somebody step up and take a captain's seat. Brom can't. It makes no sense as a character. But you, you know, uh Moonzik uh or uh Miles, you're both opportunistic and charisma charismatic. You guys could make an excellent case for taking temporary leadership of the ship and asking them to sail under you under you so that we can get to shore and make a choice uh, with the Clovis Concord. The other thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we actually still have uh, Captain Three Earrings' body to um, give to the Clovis Concord with uh, Heidi making a coffin. The last thing we need is to take an eye off that and have Heidi, uh, like, Dump set the ocean. Uh, uh, her in the ocean because she believes it's, like, the thing to do from a uh, 
like religion standpoint or something. Um, I mean, for me, I was going to say, and the next thing I was going to bring up is is whether or not the crew members were okay with t- turning in the body, right? right. Um, w- turning you know, in the body is any basically the control. only way we can get amnesty, yeah. so the amnesty chalk doesn't work without turning in the body being a preconceived notion. Yes. They, we, they, are, they are aware and they know and are And, okay and we with, talked yeah. about that before, right? Yeah. That's already happened, right? So, literally, just one of you, please take the opportunity to take control of the ship because it makes no sense for Brom to do it. I want to do it because I think that's the way our party succeeds, but I can't do it as a character. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. All right. Next order of business. Um, I think we're all in agreement that amnesty is something that you all seek. Are we all okay with the 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 proposal or the notion to turn in Captain Three Earrings' body? Not particularly for the bounty, but just for you know amnesty in return. And then I look my way to, like, I specifically make eye contact with Borth as I'm saying this. Borth kind of shrugs and says, uh, well, uh, I figured that's probably what has to happen. And I think uh, Heidi is currently uh, working on some sort of casket for her. I mean, right now, I helped bo- I helped Heidi move her into the I mean at least can we order. at least negotiate that after showing them the body as proof of her passing that we can return her body and give her at least some sort of burial that way you guys at least know what happens to the body afterwards I think that might be in her interest at least I'm sure uh talking to the Clovis Concord will make clear what we can and cannot do. I don't Uh, mind anyway. Next order of business. Um, So, this ship itself belongs to the Reverie, and I'm sure there's probably some documents, some stuff tucked away in the captain's quarters, uh, you know, regarding the activities or members or anything of the reverie. Do you guys have no issue with relinquishing any of that if we ever do find anything of that nature in the ship? I mean, the only thing I have to say about it is the plank king happy seeing the ship again if he catches wind. I uh, can not understand. You cut out sorry. really bad. Yeah. Sorry. Um, the plank king, he... Uh, yeah. He probably wouldn't take too kindly to the knowledge that information slipping out into the cord fans, and he's not somebody you want. So <laughs> again, you keep cutting out. The I, I'm so sorry. I, who's the plank king? Oh, the, the, the I uh, I point towards uh, the giant. Plank that, um, <laughs> oh, I love that. The plank king, he's, 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 a, a, he's, a he's the plank king, yeah. It's it's Brahms, Brahms the plank king. I'm, I'm the plank king, um, he's living a double life. <laughs> so, uh, you guys, uh, if you would, well, the only people who might I guess it, the only I'm trying to think of the only people who would would hear about the plank king would be either um, Miles or I, I think Brom knew a lot about uh the uh, uh, revelry too because I he, just he randomly that. knew that from my grandfather. Would I know about the plank king from my grandfather? I mean like you know like is the maybe, plank king a big enough of a maybe Brom would, would. Maybe Brom would, but uh, Miles and Edward, you'll have a higher chance of having heard a story about who the Plank King is. So, um, roll history. Yes, both of you can. All right. Uh, or can we like assist one person for advantage, or is that just? If you want to do that, that would be between you two. Miles, what's your, your history? history? Give me. 
können. Straight zero. 17. Okay. Oh, I already rolled mine into 17. I got a plus six. Okay. Uh, go ahead and, Miles, uh, why don't you roll history too, and we'll see if you roll more. My nat 20. Nope, not nat 20. So, Miles, you've only ever heard of, like, the Plank King said in, like, whispered corners of taverns when you performed a sort of, like, sea shanty. Um, but in terms of, like, songs and, and lyric that... Not really anything that's off the top of your head. Maybe if it was under a different name, you could. Uh, but directly, you're vaguely familiar with the name. Um, Edward, you have learned a little bit about the Plank King. Not a lot, but uh, you have heard of a place called Dark Town. Uh, and Darktoe is a, uh, a city off in the, uh, towards the west of the, uh, Menagerie Coast, about as far as most sailing ships, um, can sail, um, and, uh, uh, you, you, you believe that the Point King has, uh, some sort of authority over there. Um, typically, Dark Toe is well known. Um, it's less than dubious dealings. Okay, With so that knowledge of the planking, you, he's like the you do Bob, remember right? something about uh, uh, three earrings mentioning Dark Toe. Okay, so, like, what I'm getting from this is, like, uh, like the Plank King is, like, the mob boss of uh, Dark Toe. Um, you know, he he's sort of like the the leader or ruler around, like a really sketchy part of you know, like Correct. that area, right? Yes. Okay, now I'm going to say this just because the jackal is here and he's openly working for the Clovis Concord. Do we feel comfortable in relinquishing that information? And do you believe that that would be something that would jeopardize the safety of the rest of the crew? I don't know. I don't think... I thought the Plank King's kind of scary. He... His hair... Oh, I can't even describe it. I try to stay out of that company. Typically, it was Captain Three Earrings who went there and had uh, any sort of relationship with him. The Plank King I and the... Happy. The Plank King and the Clovis Concord. I feel like no matter which we choose, we make an enemy of one. I mean, if it's okay with you, Dejakul, we could probably, well, you could probably omit or skip over the report of having any information if we ever find it on this boat for the safety of the crew. Um, but I don't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't report. Fair enough. I guess we would have to do this under investigation. All right. Next. But, uh, if you attempt to lie to the Clovis Cotton Hard, they have ways of getting around that. Oh, I'm sure that they probably have means of extracting truths from people's thoughts and whatnot. I'm just wondering, do we think... I, I, I was just asking you in particular, because I'm sure they would probably have a more sampling, a, a higher degree of trust to you than they would to any of us on the basis that you're employed under them. But if it's not something you'd be willing to risk, I think we could probably shift the responsibility of all of this to us. I'm not sure how the crew... I, I know that the crew probably wouldn't want to have to live on the land or relinquish ownership of the ship. And I'm sure we can probably arrange for something so that they never have to get into contact with the Clovis Concord to be granted amnesty. But I'm not sure if they would be pursued or not by the Plank King if any of this information was taken off the ship and handed to the Clovis Concord. 
It is definitely quite a tricky situation, if that were to be the case, to relinquish that information. I don't want to put any of I don't want to put any of you crewmates in danger at all. Well then I feel like we should keep the uh ones with the most immediate power over us the happiest. If we're heading to Port de Mali, we should do everything in our power to make sure that we are not apprehended the instant we set foot in the city and that the crew is not in serious jeopardy immediately. It isn't. I mean, I think for that, the Jaco can send them a message to tell a, a, a to, to to at least notify of you know our ship's arrival to them. I'm not sure if that would help or it would be in your interests, as it would most likely result in them sending some sort of force to at least apprehend us. Here's a question. Moving forward. To all of you on the crew. Would you like to stay aboard the wave chaser? Or when we reach Port de Mali, are you all interested in heading your own ways? Ilya says, Look, I... I can't go back. And that's why I joined the ship. So no matter who captains it, no matter what happens, you will stay aboard? Yes, I suppose, yeah. That sounds about right. Dejarko? I mean, I'm going to have to be... I, I'm going to be frank with you all. Um... I just go where the money goes. Yeah, and she kind of gives like a like a half smile. Understandable. Yes, I'm aware. A lot of mercenaries oh, are only loyal to the gold. Kijuri. Like he, he kind of gives uh, like a like a half smile. Like, hey, you you can stay with us. We'd love for you to stay with us. I mean. We're I off to try to go where money is. Well, no, money is uh, money is definitely a factor. I just uh, I'm not prepared to lose my life over any of this. So if I've got to go, I'm gonna go. There's no need to jump ship quite yet. I mean, I've got all this food to enjoy. <laughs> Can't jump <laughs> ship yet. To do Bo it then! Right. Boris, what are your thoughts? I don't know. It's not hard to find a job with a different ship, given my sailing experience. I just. I can't tell you. I guess I would have to be um, whenever. whatever comes out of this. Well. No matter what, we. I remember having fond games of uh, playing cards against Send With You, and I'd hate for that to have to go away. With that, he kind of, he kind of, you know. Look, I, I can't necessarily look over the fact that you killed the captain, the captain. Like, I, I. Uh, you guys aren't bad people. I get that you have reasons for doing it, but uh, I don't know. I, I've enjoyed, you know, hanging out with most of you, but uh, I just... Well... I'm gonna go where the waves take me, you know? Well... If... <laughs> oh, I'm gonna shoot myself in the foot for this one. Well, considering that if you're not comfortable with captaining the ship, at least <laughs> perhaps give us a chance to run it with you guys with us. And if 
you find it acceptable, then feel free to stay with us. But if maybe if you if you don't enjoy it, then we won't stop you from leaving. He gives you a little curt nod. Well, I mean, with that being said, what happens after to the boat? Who gets ownership of it? Do you think we should hand it over to Heidi, or do you think that Boris should be the one? Or do you Look, think I don't people? want to. I don't want to deal with the fucking hassle that it is to own a ship. That's never my intention. That's fu that's too much responsibility. Right. Um, Here's how I would Heidi. Be it, it would depend. It would depend on how things go with the Clovis Concord, I suppose. Like, you know, they might want to requisition the ship. This is entirely possible, but... That is fair. Until that decision has been made, I think... I think, rightfully, this ship does belong to Heidi. But I know she's not... In no condition. She's in no condition to captain right now. And well, if Forrest does not want to take responsibility, I could I could look after it, at least until we make it to Port de Mali. Also, with that being said, Dejaco, do you th speaking of making it to Port de Mali, next time one of those messenger seagulls comes over and uh, mm -hmm. you send a letter, can you at least make it so that you know, on the terms of the letter, we will submit and we will not attack them. We will approach them peacefully um, with hmm. the body of three Captain Three Earrings um, on the condition that uh, only a party of representatives for this boat uh, go through and that we allow this boat to be under supervision, but not to allow this boat to be docked or boarded by any members of the Clovis Concord. That way, at least the members here can st remain on the boat without needing to, you know, be apprehended directly on the shore. I mean... I... I can put something like that. I might have to phrase it differently. I don't want to step on their toes or anything. Um, I mean, if you want to, we could paint ourselves as a bad guy in saying that the, uh, as... The Let's occupiers not. of the ship, these are our demands. Hold on. Let's not. H hold on, Edward. We're not trying to paint anyone here as the bad guy. We're just trying to find a resolve for this. Please remember, I also live under the Covis Concord. But it can be part of the deal, you know? But that's not the point, though. Let's... let's... We're... If, if, if they try to requisition the ship, and if, if they try and take away the ship, it's possible that we can just negotiate it. If we paint I've... ourselves as the bad guys, we will go in as the bad guys, and we will already be at a disadvantage for whatever we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. That's fair. We're trying to be on as whatever... neutral terms as possible. Whatever we want from this, though, it seems clear three things. One, nobody at this table, except for Moonzik, has even attempted to... Um, take any sort of leadership of the ship. So, I think he should captain the ship back, uh, back to the, uh... back to Port de Mali. Two, the fate of everybody on this ship and the ship itself is uncertain until we know what the terms were, till we know what the bounty was on Captain Three Earrings, and until we have some understanding of um, what we can expect in terms of uh, pardons from the Clovis Concord. I'd say that makes our heading fairly clear, does it not? I suppose so. Makes sense to me. I'll go set sails then, huh? Uh, not, I, I... not before eating breakfast. Oh, okay, that works. Well, I mean, so, orders. At least, <laughs> at least until, at at least, 
let's have a good, um, you know, peaceful breakfast to where we all are at, uh, have amnesty with each other. And all right. This. You see, with that, um, <laughs> part, Borth, uh, goes and picks up, um, a couple of barrels and moves them, um, to the center of the ship. Um, some of them are placed around, basically, between the crates, the barrels, and even using your piece of driftwood, um, <laughs> you're able to, uh, make a sort of table of sorts um, to sit and enjoy breakfast at. <laughs> and um, I imagine that Moonzik, uh, an Animo, and uh, Kijori are handing out uh, breakfast to everybody. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Plating up breakfast. <laughs> as we're as we're as we're handing out the plates. Uh, and we all sit down. As that's, as that's happening, I'm actually going to leave and I'm going to head to Heidi. Okay. Um, My unseen servant is still up for like half an hour, right? Yeah. Uh, could I command the servant, like, you know, mentally to sort of head down to the cabin where the captain's quarter is and start investigating for clues? Um, so or, yeah. that is beyond the capabilities of your unseen servant. Interact with an object performs and below the fetching thing. It can't look for it can't look for okay, clues. Yeah. It could fetch something, but it can't look for a specific thing. Got it. it basically um, it, can, it can collect a specific item if you tell yeah. it to, but it cannot think that this might be important. Can, yeah, you're technically controlling it. Okay. Right? It's so, not yeah. a being of counter spot. Okay, fair enough. I guess, like, scrubbing the decks is something that it could do. Yeah, because you're telling it. To, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's a chore. Basically, it's... Yeah. it's it, Unseen Servant does chores. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I mean, after it's finished scrubbing the deck, I guess... I mean, I guess I'll have it on standby so that I can wash the plates after we're finished the that dinner. Works. Uh, sure. Um... um if you don't mind, Moonzik, I would like to go with Brom, and then we can come back to what goes on about the table. Absolutely. Does that sound like a plan? That's perfect. Um, Brom, you make your way down below deck, where you still hear a, a, a hammering and uh, of metal on of a hammer on nail. You see Heidi. Mm. Heidi. She looks up at you. Everybody's having food. You need to eat. I don't know. Um, she says, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to, how I could eat. Don't have the stomach for it. I know. Believe me. I know. But what do you know? I watched the love of my life die in front of me with my two children coughing in the next room, not knowing if they would fall to the same sickness. I know loss. Mm. And an empty stomach has never done anyone any good. <laughs> She, she pauses for a second. I've got... I've got to finish this. I know. And you will. And you'll do it in time. And I'll help you. But after you have some food to regain your strength. Make a persuasion roll. Mm. Persuasion. 
Oh, uh, I. oh. I cannot uh, roll. No one can that roll. You just rolled a nat 20. <laughs> yes, uh, the yes. one roll that was completely accidental. <laughs> um, Should have saved that one. She says, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to go eat with everybody. I don't know how anybody can eat at a time like this. I understand. I'll bring you something anyhow. You don't have to eat it. But it will be there for you. It won't taste like anything. But... It'll keep you going for the next day. And that is worth something. And I'm just... And I'm going to leave her there and I'm going to bring her a plate. You, um... Do you immediately bring her a plate? Yep. Oh, no. Um, make a, um... Uh... Uh, make a, uh, a perception or insight check, either or. Oh, no. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, 21. Let's okay. go. So, you kind of, as you make your way back down, um, before you, you know, finish coming down the stairs, you, uh, uh, you hear her, her crying. Again, with renewed sobs. Um, and uh, you come around the you come around the corner. Um, and uh, uh, you see, uh, she kind of sniffs a little bit. Um, and uh, with shaky hands is continuing to hammer the nail. Because that nail is stubborn, I guess. <laughs> Oh, this is sad. I'm just gonna leave the uh, food on the side for her, such that she sees that I've left it, but not that I'm pressuring her into anything. And I'm she gonna go back up. doesn't even acknowledge that you came by. Mm, nor did I expect her to. Okay. Back up on deck. <laughs> um... The sun's kind of beating down, uh, taking and keeping the food as warm as it can be. Um, and you all feel it on, on your face as you look around. Everybody's seated all around themselves. Brom comes back up with a, uh, with a plate in front of his spot and a spoonful of cinnamon next to him. <laughs> what is this? So, as we were preparing this morning's breakfast, uh, uh, for, th uh, for this food, we kind of came upon a tradition that, uh, you know, that my family used to do whenever we'd take boat trips. Um, whenever we would have a, a breakfast like this, we would, the first bite that we would take would be full of cinnamon. <laughs> oh, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Make a deception check. Oh, fuck! Can I override that with, like, a two? Oh, wait, what no, that's... Fuck? Um... So... Um... That's well below most of your passive... Um... Insights. Um, yeah. Um... So, each one of you, uh... Notices the... Uh, the slight grin on his face. Yeah, I mean, I do have a tell, so that's perfectly acceptable. <laughs> you only have a tell if you roll below a certain number. That's how D&D &D works, probably. No? I don't know. It's a, he has a flaw, it doesn't matter. It is a character <laughs> flaw. Oh. oh, never mind. I thought there was like a general thing. I just couldn't keep it, I just couldn't keep that character flaw back, apparently, this time around. How do you all respond? Lily, you were saying something? It smells delicious. Is, it, <laughs> is there spoons in front of everyone or just brown? 
And and there's one in front of everyone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um Wait, trying to take like, space to up. Except, I, I, <laughs> seeing Moonzik, his look, like Moonzik, uh consciously did not put a spoon of cinnamon on Heidi's plate. It's because well, Heidi, yeah, 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 no, when he brought, he did not bring a spoonful for the plate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, seeing Moonzik, the spoons were there. Good. Oh, I'm gonna, definitely. I'm gonna look at him and say, "You first, Mister Tradition." <laughs> <laughs> Moonzik will uh, heartily take up the spoon and like hold it in his like and put it like take um, like trying to stealthily I don't know how like take a deep breath and then take the spoon into his mouth pull the spoon out and just like hold his breath okay without making Roll it look like he's holding, saving without throw. making it look like he's holding his breath <laughs> Oh, that boy. is not this what is... caused us that, by the way. The coughing? Well, he doesn't know that. He, that doesn't help. <laughs> no, I know. Make a constitution saving throw. Uh, of all Ooh. fucking things. You kind of, um, you kind of go mm, a little bit with, like, the this horrible taste in your mouth. Um, but then kind of smile right at the end. <laughs> the spoon's still in your mouth. <laughs> I'm just gonna continue watching as he holds did the I, cinnamon in I, his mouth longer. Did I not pull the spoon out of my mouth? I thought I thought I, I, pulled, I pulled the spoon. Did you pull out of the spoon? Mouth. Okay, you pulled the spoon out of your mouth. Where's the cinnamon gonna go? It's mm -hmm. he's holding it currently in his mouth. I know, and I'm just gonna continue watching him. And he's not, he's not, he's not, he, he has not swallowed. swallowed. Yeah. I know he hasn't swallowed. No, 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 no. An insight? Okay. Uh. Oh, watch God. his face turn bright red. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Nine. Now I mean, I'm looking yeah. right at him. Is that really that hard to see whether he swallowed or not? Yeah. Yeah, it is pretty. It's a pretty minute thing <laughs> to, to notice. You you did not notice. Um, All right, was, then. so I, I'm I, I heartily that, gonna that constitution saving through. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. So give it. I didn't notice that he seems to be okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to heartily take. A spoonful. I'm getting thrown well, off he's the a ship barb. for this. Mine, the, everybody comes this. at the exact same time if you're planning on doing it. Edward's uh, not doing this. <laughs> he just thinks Edward... y'all are crazy. I'm not doing it. Okay. We're all in stream. He's gonna sprinkle some cinnamon on his pancakes, though. <laughs> what? Um, Quinn, you're in on this! Why are you making his intelligence save? Because he can't do it for the memes. <laughs> 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 I and mean, he did, he did watch. Um, he did a absolutely watch Moonzik do this. So, um, it makes sense that he would, <laughs> he would. Anyway, um, everybody roll constitution saving throws if you took a bite. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Oh, Yo, what? they're all rolling so high. Oh my god, it's it's gonna end up being the fucking crew that end up coughing on this shit. I'm gonna look like a bad fucking person. You really do. You are a bad person. <laughs> you, yeah, exactly. This is your first act as captain. <laughs> no, this was my first act. I was taking on before captain. Oh, oh shit! No. Oh no, that's a fine. Oh shit! Mm. Yes, here we have uh, Hyperion abusing his power <laughs> once again. Immediately. Oops. Four, twelve, or five? I don't know. No, that was it's with. I didn't mean to do it with um, disadvantage. Uh, twelve is like the higher. Well, it's the first one. So twelve. <laughs> I am. I am going to say that. 
like as people put it, uh, like put it in their mouth and they close the mouth over the spoon, uh, Moonzik is going to cough it up and be like, "Oh damn it!" Um, I'm going to essentially uh, turn around and uh, cough it up and be like. You have the worst traditions. <laughs> um, okay, so with with that, there is a a spew of uh, of cinnamon coming from um, uh, Dejarkel and Boris Boris Um Oh, and. Um, and Brom, actually, because Brom failed as well. Um, <laughs> DC 15, okay. Yeah, DC 15. Um, it should be DC 19, to be honest. We got really lucky. <laughs> it is... Uh, oh, God. As, he, as you guys spew it out in front of you in a big puff of... Um, uh, of cinnamon in the air, uh, <laughs> coughing uncontrollably, um, the... Uh, Kajori, he happened to uh, know that this was a bad idea, and uh, he uh, he does join in and he spews it all out. Um, most particularly, uh, Nemo and Mozik, you know that he's he's faking it. Um, <laughs> he just he barely even like put it in his mouth before he's like puff in front of him. Um, Weirdly enough, uh, uh, Diliu seems to, like, be trying to, like, his eyes start kind of watering a little bit as he's trying to hold back the, uh, um, to hold back the, uh, the ensuing coughing storm, um, before he, too, uh, bends over the side and uh, spits it all out onto the deck. Um, Lily, what do you, what does Windchime do? Uh, can, she, can she manage to swallow it with, like, maybe a small cough, but, like, <laughs> oh. Is sure. this a good idea? Yeah. Sure. Good idea? Um, you need to make another constitution saving throw. Okay. Because this causes vomiting. This causes oh, vomiting. No. So. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh no. yeah. You 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 no. swallow it, and there is only like a moment uh, before you end up vomiting uh, uh, to the side, um, as you're like. <laughs> at, at this, at, at this water, I need I water. Stand oh. I stand up. And go, whoa, 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 everybody! What are you guys doing? Listen, I. I, I know this tradition. You just put a little extra on your first bite. Like, what are you? you oh my god! <laughs> make a deception. Make it. Okay. Oh my god. Make it fucking god. You're it's gonna. Funny, though. Is 12 okay? Funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say most people, um, you're, I don't, I think most people's passive, um, Insight. I know all the crews is um, beneath that, but passive insight. What's everybody's modifier for? Uh, um, right. What's everybody's modifier for insight? Okay, mine is plus one. Oh. Okay. okay. So you, 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 you cast the lie. Basically, uh, if your if your modifier is. is is 12 or greater, it catches the lie. Okay. I'd catch it. Okay. I I just sprinkle a little bit on my on my first bite of pancake and just take a bite. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly seems to be the wiser of us. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a they dinner table. Burr, I, 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 burr, I, right? I don't think I'd need to ask you to refrain from throwing up all over the table. And then I'm going to, like, you know, gesture my uh, unseen servant to start, you like, called? you know, scrubbing up, like, the cinnamon, that's all. And the vomit, and the vomit. On the floor. <laughs> okay. 
So, so the unseen uh, servant gets uh, moves the bucket uh, uh, and the brush and the brush and the brush um, over to clean up the. I can't <laughs> the believe I can't believe an animo died on that fucking hill. <laughs> oh my god. Um, or at least defended that fucking hill. Transcended, all right. This is what <laughs> you, this you all start to uh, to get passed around drink, both both uh, water and booze, if you so desire. Um, and uh, um, start digging in. It's not a great breakfast. It, it you can see that effort was made, but. but it's not great. <laughs> Especially now hindered by the taste of, you know, bile and or a, a dry mouth accompanying such. Um, uh, oh, well, well. For most of you, it's hard to tell if it's because the cooking is just that bad or if it's because you just inhaled a bunch of cinnamon. I don't, I think my, my taste buds are gone. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a tea <laughs> Do you think that have taste buds? Yeah. Uh, I, I, well, that I, was I, a very I, tasteless joke of you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know it was a joke. <laughs> no, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Is there anything else anybody would like to do or say at the table? Nah. Nah. I'm gonna like snicker at like the guys who are like you know shoveling cinnamon into their mouth <laughs> as they vomit. I don't know. I just. Um, think I did want to say, Miles. I never received a con save from you. Did you eat the no. cinnamon or no? He didn't. No. No. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Spoonful of cinnamon. <laughs> It would have been bad oh, if I had cinnamon. given Heidi a spoonful of cinnamon and she did see the plate. I would have been like, <laughs> and all of a sudden we hear from no, below no, deck, no, 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 "What no, the no. hell?" If she, was, if she was there, we would have just given her a spoonful of brown sugar. Oh, that's true. <laughs> oh my god. Do we have uh, a spoonful of sugar though? Yeah, yeah, you guys have sugar. sugar. Okay, okay guys, we will bring, bring, this, <laughs> we'll bring this back down. <laughs> okay. We'll bring this back down. Um, Miles, you had said something before being railroaded by uh, the party. What were you saying? I don't remember saying anything at the moment. Okay, yeah, no problem. Um, but yeah, you all in mostly, tentatively, kind of enjoy breakfast. <laughs> kind of. Tentatively, kind of enjoy breakfast. But at least <laughs> After breakfast, music goes off to to uh, to the bow and says, "Never again." <laughs> <laughs> like just kind of mutters, mutters it to himself as he looks over the sea. Um. Uh, I'll come over, pat him on the back, and say, "Well, Captain." Would you take me? Okay. Oh yeah. Also, um, one thing I would like. To... Sorry. Hold on. You totally interrupted that moment, so no. you can wait for a minute. Let oh, them no. do their thing. Also, uh, Quinn, I cannot hear you very well. What? Why? Oh my goodness. Oh, it's fucking disconnected. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're so far away. <laughs> Hello. Hello. This is <laughs> yeah. you like no, this put it better. back. Stop it. Hey, hello. Hi, I I, anyway. I go up and I and I tap him on the shoulder and I say, "Well, would you take me as your first mate?" Well, I absolutely would. Acting first, uh, an acting captain would need an acting first mate. I would love to have you as my first mate. Arg! <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell. Uh, especially after, okay. especially after lying for me during that whole cinnamon fiasco. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was amazing. I don't know what you mean. 
I think it raised spirits. Do, do, when do you? Is for some. For some. Do. Maybe for others. <laughs> As they look down onto the deck and see a, a, a brown It definitely mist raised my. <laughs> okay, guys. It, it, you guys it raised can't my. talk at the exact same time. <laughs> like, one at a time. <laughs> well, I suppose we did garner a lot of attention, so. Whether it was good attention or not, we'll, I guess, find out in the future. But that's uh, neither here nor there. Yep. <laughs> okay, Rocky, what would you? What did you say? Oh, I was just gonna pull a prank on them and say uh, I'm gonna turn all the drinks like you know you know how like the uh, you know how like the ship has probably like you know a barrel of like water or beer or whatever the hell the crew drinks right. I was just okay. gonna sneak around after dinner, uh, cast press a digitation, and turn the flavor of the the drinks into cinnamon. No! Oh my no. so God! That uh, press a digitation um, I, with something like that, it's not going to change it forever. It's go it has a time frame on it. Uh, oh, wait, I think one it's hour one hour. Yeah. Yeah, one oh, hour. Oh, no! Okay. That's good enough. So, for one hour. Um, Wait, like, you can, you can get, like, a water skin or a canteen or something with, like, water in it that he drinks from. You son of a bitch! <laughs> yeah. Come on. I take that as a yes. Okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna I guess I digitate the drink inside of it. Make it taste like cinnamon. Not, like, strong cinnamon, just, like, you know, like, hints of cinnamon. Like, just Moonzix <laughs> okay. water skin? Specifically Moonzix. That's that's fair enough. <laughs> that um, is one hundred percent fair and justified. Okay. Um after a short moment of like starting to clear plates, I assume you're gonna make your um your unseen servant pick up plates and carry them back down. Yeah, pick it up, carry it down, wash it, you know, simple yep. chores. The unseen servant will do that. Um with help from both uh, Kajori and uh, Boris. Um, not not too long after, Boris uh, comes up to uh, um, up to you, Moonstick, and says, Well, uh, well, uh, Captain, I suppose. I'm not sure if I enjoy the title right now. I'm not sure if I ever will enjoy the title, but I'll take it for now. Yes. Alright, I don't mind dealing with the sails and the ropes and things, but somebody's got to uh, sit at the stern and navigate us. I, I don't think, uh, I'm I, not necessarily certain that Heidi is up to it. I must agree with you on that one. Um, kind of thinks for a second. <clears throat> Do we... Um, where is there a compass that I might be able to use? Compass in the map. Um, probably back in three, Captain Three Earrings' uh, office. Well, I suppose I better go grab that then, and and, and at least. Well, I know where it is. I can go grab it if you want. You think we should probably grab it on the way to investigate the office of Captain Three Earrings for potential clues regarding revelry? information or any of that nature well, worst case scenario we can probably use it as a bargaining chip if the body of captain three earrings alone isn't enough to grant amnesty to the crew as much as i'd love to uh engage in that investigation i will leave that to you um all i require uh, is the compass and maybe the map i don't know if the map is actually the map's not a good <laughs> a map's probably not a good idea to have up on deck because it can probably blow away with the wind, so I'll take the compass for now. Alright, understood. Uh, I'm going to accompany uh, Anemo down into the captain quarters. Uh, well, that's happening. Uh, Brom, Winchime, Miles. I'm fulfilling my promise. I'm going to go down uh, to where Heidi is working on the uh, box. And I'm wordlessly going to sit there, and I'm going to help her. Alrighty. You you continue helping her make a make a casket. Um, 
you can um, pick what ability check you think best fits in for how you're helping and roll it. We'll see if you're just getting in the way. Okay, wow. that's a cool one. That's so, not that's cool. bad. Um, Specifically, you... what I want to be doing isn't necessarily making the thing perfect, but supporting her such that uh, her job is easier. Like lifting up a side of the casket, holding it so that mm -hmm. she can uh, get better and angles. Passing her the tools she needs. Yes, hammering and my own thing every once in a while. But it's much more about her knowing that somebody is there to help her. Okay. Oh. Um, it doesn't take you too terribly long, probably the next half hour or so, before uh, the task is finished. Um, you do see, uh, you take note of the... Uh, uh, of the plate still kind of sitting there. Um, you notice um, that um, there is a couple of bites taken out, but not many, just a couple. Um, not good enough. And uh, you, after about half an hour or so, you uh, and Heidi both together uh, carry the casket back up onto the deck. Um, now, before we continue... With that, um, uh, Miles and Winter? I don't know. Uh, if you are looking for things to do, I'm sure that, uh, Borth can set tax tasks. <laughs> what is he, a lord? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Winston will, will uh, uh, stand there, l like, looking around, not sure what to do, um, uh, like, close to Boris. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you continue, like, he moves about deck, um, just like, you know, uh, coiling up rope and, like, pulling the masts open and a variety of, uh, of bozeman tasks and every time he moves you like kind of nonchalantly make your way to stand near him again <laughs> twiddling your thumb <laughs> looking about at this um, point he thinks that you like him <laughs> <laughs> after about the third time of him moving to a different location and you following um he he looks at you and says uh can i help you uh uh um I just want to be helpful. Well, standing around near me is definitely not helping. <laughs> um, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, just go put all of the uh, the stuff you set out for the tables. Go put it back in its proper position. I don't want it to, you know, fall off the ship if we catch bad wave. Oh, you're right. That's a great idea. I'll go do that right now. <laughs> okay. What I'm uh, thinking, I thought about so it. So you start moving these barrels and, if you like, um, back to their original positions. And um, I need you to make a strength check to see if you can lift up these barrels or what manner of struggling you are. Yeah, let's see. Strength, strength. Athletics is fine. Or safe, safe. Sure, nice. safe, same modifier. Um, you are, you can pretty easily, like, pretty carry these barrels into their proper positions. Uh, you, yeah, and the crates and things, you kind of give it a big push and shove it back up against the, uh, um, the wall there. And, um, and point at them and it's like, like here? <laughs> He, he like it you, you say that he takes him a moment he go he's continuing doing his thing before he doesn't hear a response and he looks back at you are you talking were you talking to me yeah yeah you uh, <laughs> uh, yeah no that's that's where they were okay good I just wanted to make sure all right. <laughs> 
he goes and goes back to his his tasks before you see him. Um, he calls over uh, uh, Dilly and both of them. Uh, um, excuse me, not Dilly uh, He calls over to Jarkle, and uh, she kind of climbs her way up a little bit higher and helps um, release some of the masts. Uh, and uh, Dilly you um, he uh, he actually makes his way to Moonzik. Um, Captain, that's what we have to call you now, right? What can I do for you, Dilly? Well, I'm not the most capable in the world, but. Um, I might be able to help you with steering, at least. I can't spend a lot of time watching Heidi. Yeah? Well, yeah. that would... Um, <laughs> I haven't the first idea, honestly. I was just kind of uh, thinking about how it would be best to... How I might get a sense of navigating, but... If, if you're feeling confident, then yes, please. I'll mm. I don't know everything, but I'm probably be able to. I can at least grip the steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> he says the steering wheel. <laughs> well, how about I stand with you then? I got the compass. And we got the steering wheel. We'll keep an eye out together. Okay, to the helm it is. Um, he goes to the helm of the ship, and, uh, with your direction and the sails open, you guys start moving forward. Milo! What you doing? Uh, down in the deep. Don't <laughs> in, in the deep. It is. You can call it mental freeze. God damn it. God damn it. I think he's probably gonna head back down deck. He's got some stuff he's going doing down there. Going through his stuff. Okay. Alrighty. Well, does anybody have anything else they would like to do? I mean, investigate the captain quarters? Yes. Getting there. I was talking about the other four. Oh, okay. All right. With that, um, Nemo and Edward, you make your way into the captain's quarters. Um, yeah. You see the site before you. What you doing? Uh, I'd like to to sit down behind the desk. <laughs> okay. And kind of just like like see from her perspective, you know, <laughs> check drawers, you know, you know the whole bit. Yeah, yeah. um, you move. Fully totally looting this fucking body. office. Try try not to look at the corpse. You, 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 Sorry, move her, you move her quill over a little bit, and you notice on the map now after the conversation had Dark Toe Isle, um, right here. Where? Yeah. I'd like. I'd Ooh. like. Ooh. Okay, I'm. I would oh, wait, like. No, this is the name. To. Man, I don't know. Is it is it best to like copy the map? I'd like to um... laminate the map. Can we? Can laminate we, the map. Can we find a way to laminate this? <laughs> I do not think that anything on this ship will have that capability. <laughs> <laughs> But if you want to copy it over, there's books, uh, empty things around, if you so desire. My, 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 I'd like to, I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to make like a did small you, Did you say copy it over? Myself, um, that I just have it with me? I mean, did you, did you say copy it over? Because, uh, you know, Edward over here happens to have, uh, I mean, let me... Are, you, are you saying that as yourself or as Edward? As no, as myself, I'm just saying Edward has proficiency to cartography. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, like, could Edward be the one to, uh... 
So you're Poppy speaking in the third person. It's too late, man. I'm the one here. Third person. <laughs> are, yes. you, are, are you now saying that as Edward? Uh, I mean, I'm saying, I mean, if there's something of interest on the map, do you think I could probably take a gander at it? Great. Um, I was just going to try and like put it in this book here. It takes out a journal. Um, <laughs> and just to make sure that I had it, you know. Okay. Um, sure, if you need another copy of this map, I could probably replicate it to uh, an approximate detail with relative consistency between the two. Well, why not? Why, why didn't you just say so? I hand him, I hand him that, and then, uh, and then I'm gonna investigate while he draws a map. Then. <clears throat> yep, I'm like gonna copy the map. Okay, and you're gonna make a tool proficiency check. So when you open up your character, the left hand side, there is um, on the bottom. There's like a tools and proficiencies. If you have the cartography, it should be there. When you click that. Um, Tell me, you're probably mm. using your intelligence to do this? Yeah, I added my intelligence and my Okay. Wow. Uh, so you got a 20. Alrighty. Um, you very, you know, very accurately uh, copy over the map um, and um, feel like you have, after studying the map and going through and especially plotting it out yourself, it's going to take you um, about half an hour to get a rough one, but you could spend like another hour or so to, to detail it out. It's not as pretty as um, the original, but you never expected that. But it is quite accurate. Um, and uh, you do also clock, you know, Dark Toe Isle. Um, and you know, with your with your proficiency with cartographer's tools, you very well could help uh, Moonzik um, and uh, uh, Dilyu navigate to Port de Molly. I mean, if it's okay, could I first like like draw up um, a rough, like you know, drawing of the map itself? But instead of the entire map, I'd like to just copy. You know the position, like the general area of where we could be relative, and like you know all the way down to the port, Molly, right? Yeah. Um, oh. So you want to basically, yeah. Um, draw in particular. Um, that would be like Palma Flora. Yeah, Palma Flora, Port de Molly, like you know the, the general area that we would be interested in heading towards, not the entire map. This, right? like this area, right? Yeah. Okay. But I want uh, the entire and then. Map. You know, I'm going to tell to Enemo. Do you think you could probably hand this over to uh, the, the uh, captain over there and, um, you know, have him take a look at it? Tell him, don't worry if it gets wet or destroyed. It didn't really take me that long to make. <laughs> uh, sh yeah. I mean, sh in, in a second, sure. Not right now. Okay. So, you, while he is drawing that map and doing that, you're going to be looking about the room? Where are you looking? Yeah. I'm, I'm looking. I mean, I'm not looking at the dead body. So, uh, if there's if there's any drawers or anything, I'd be opening them. I'm trying to look for, you know, like if there's any like secret rooms or passages. It's okay. That's also something I'm looking for. Secret okay. passages. You know. Secret Go passages. Ahead. Maybe not oh. passages. It's a boat. Secret tunnels. Secret on a tunnel. Boat. Go ahead and uh, make a investigation check. Can I make an intimidation check? <laughs> I'm going to intimidate the passenger. Um, investigation. It's so stupid. Nine. Um. Stupid. <laughs> so you uh, you look about the room. You don't find anything of like crazy like importance like no secret drawers or trap doors or any of that uh but you do see next to her bed is a chess it's locked all right <laughs> all right you had to great like at the foot of her bed mm-hmm it's locked great what's uh, locked 
It's a, it's just a, a chest nearby a bed. I mean, do you want to just like pry open the top with brute force? I do. I mean, I'm sure that. Oh God. I mean, Am if I really we're not going to do it, the Corpus Concord most likely will if they <laughs> seize the ship. I didn't find a key when I was looking in any drawers. Nope. Can we look in Captain. I'm gonna search her body. Oh. Okay, roll an investigation check. Fuck it. Oof, this is oh, a stupid five. game. It's a bad game. <laughs> the ending is just bad. It's just a. It's just a game it's of a luck. Bad. What is this? The, what, yeah, There's rolling no dice is luck. Is well, I, I would luck. say this. This is. I just want to make it clear for you. Um, it's not D and D. That's not something you opted into. You know who did opt into it? Investigation is Rocky's strong suit. <laughs> so also, you're really good at lifting things. Also, isn't life just or a game? Prying of open luck? things with your muscles. Or prying open things. So with you go. Um, I just want to see how you react to this. Would you make a, a Constitution <laughs> save? Me? Plus, yeah, I just want to see how you react to this. <laughs> Okay, so you uh, you pull back the blanket from the blankets from the body of uh, uh, <laughs> Captain Three Earrings, and uh, you you pull it back. You look you look in her uh, in her coat pocket. Um, again, the the wound still pretty prevalent. Um, Notably, you do notice that uh, um, there seems to be a almost shimmer, um, like around her body. Um, it kind of sets you on edge. Like something, something is magically going on with her. Um, but you check her, you check her coat pocket, and it doesn't appear to be in. Hmm. Wait, does or doesn't? I'll does not. Oh. Uh, uh, no, I just want to find out how she's doing. That was a terrible joke. Medicine. <laughs> right. Stabilize the dead body. Let's go. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> yes, the body I is stable. Use my head I, I, should, back I suppose I could, like, give you guys a view of the captain's quarters so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. We have a view? Um... Well, you guys can zoom into the captain's quarter on the right hand side. Is it supposed to be that low res of a picture? It, that... Give it a second. Yeah, it's loading. Okay, so that entire room is the captain's quarter. Yep. Yes. Okay, and she's in the bed, right? Yes. Okay, and like I'm sitting here, I'm like drawing away. He's like rummaging through the body here. Mm -hmm. and, and in my brain, I uh, I picture um, here and here on either side of the desk um, bookshelves. If I take another pass at the bookshelves, do I see anything interesting? A medicine check? Why'd you roll a medicine check? It was a joke. I oh, asked okay. if I could see her condition. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, roll Arcana. Yes, oh, the sure. patient seems to be uh, suffering from death. So, there's definitely some sort of magical spell on her. Um, it's like, again, like, when you, if you were to, like, touch her arm, which you accidentally, which you had to do to get into her coat pocket, um, you, uh, um, you notice that the, like, the, the shimmer kind of moves with your finger. Ooh. Ooh. And it's kind of, like... Like you, one thing you do note with that medicine check is that her body is uh, right now at this moment not in rigor. Ooh, interesting. I that's good. I I'm good with that. What 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 are you good with? Did you find <laughs> oh, something? Yeah. Did you find the key to the Dude, chest? I, I, if I'm not talking with a British accent, I'm not talking. <laughs> That's my character, all right? Oh. 
<laughs> Wait, your character is British too? Is it like Canada? It, it, he definitely has a bit of an accent. I'm using we, it right now. Everyone except for well, Rigal has some British. kind of an accent. And, and Windjime. Yeah, I'm too lazy. My accent changes a lot because, like, you know, sometimes I start to say something and I'm not using the accent. And sometimes it sounds a little bit. Alright, alright, fair enough. Anyway, enough about your accent. Listen, you're gonna, you're gonna hear me right now. You asked me a question when I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Did you find the key to the chest anywhere? I, I don't know, it wasn't on a body. Do you want me to take a look at it? Sh sure, yeah. Okay, I'm There's gonna... this weird glow, though. Like I, I don't know. If, I don't, I don't oh. know what's going on with that. Uh, do I have to roll an Arcana check to like discern it, or? Or yeah, yeah, you would roll an Arcana check. Sixteen. Uh, with a sixteen, you can tell. Uh, I'm gonna even. I'm gonna say you know that this is the effects of a uh, of a ritual called gentle repose, uh, yeah. which basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. It has I know, but let me say it for those of you who don't know. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, basically, it's a spell that stops the decomposition of bodies for up to ten days. Um, it is not concentration. Um, you don't have to worry about anything like that. Uh, but uh, it keeps it stable, even in the case of a. Uh, um, no, no, no. Um, even in the case of, uh... Fourth, so you can also, like, cast revival spells as well, um, if it, if it's still within the time span, span, span of, uh, after casting Gentle Repose. Does that make sense? Yeah, and also you can't revive it with, uh, like, you know, an undeath spell, you can only revive it with, like, you know, a revival spell. So you can't use Create Undead on it, but you can still use, um, like, you know, like, you can't use Create yeah. Undeath, or you can't use Hexblade's Curse to create a Spectre out of it or anything, but you can still, like, you know, definitely Revivify it, right? Right. Anybody got 500 gold? Well, I mean, like, we can't Revivify it, because it's been more than a minute since Captain Three Earrings died, so, like, you'd have to go oh, with the next one over, like, Raise Dead, I think. Which is, I think, one day. So technically, you could still cast Raise Dead within a week. Yeah. If you wanted to, but um, yeah, it, basically, you ca it can't with your repose. You can't be uh, turned into an undead, and you can't, uh, um, and your body doesn't decompose. So. Very useful spell. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean. It seems that somebody has given her a hallowed touch. At least some somebody has the grace to watch over her after death and pay regard to her body. Now, if I was... I mean, unfortunately, we're not the respectful type, as we are in clear violation of our privacy. On that note, if I were Captain Three Earrings, where would I hide the key to a chest that would clearly be in, you know, clearly have the contents of my most prized and private possession? You dare to check underneath the mattress. <laughs> yes, I'm going to roll an investigation for that. Roll an investigation check. <laughs> uh, we are bad people. 18. So, you think that, um... So... You, you, you think that if you were Captain Three Earrings, uh, a good place to start would be probably on her person, if something's valuable in that chest. Am I um, really going to the Viola Corp for money? Not for money, for secrets. So then she would know that, uh, yeah, she'd probably keep it close to her. Okay, I'm gonna, like, you know, look clutched, like, you know, look in her hand if she's got anything clutched in her pockets, in her boot. Like, you know. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to keep the same investigation check. Um, I'm going to make you roll again. Um, the, uh, you, you, have a, you find it in her uh, left hand uh, pants pocket. Uh, here we go. Uh, I believe this. Why did I not look there? Put a stupid lapse in judgment. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, though, you do have the decency not to. 
throw up around in her posterior in order to find stuff like this. So I do applaud you for that. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take the key and I'm gonna like see if it fits into the lock for the chest. Okay, it does. Yeah, it, it fits into the lock. You pop it open. Opens up. Um, looking inside of the chest, um, you find um, quite a bit of, uh, of things. Uh, there appears to be a uh, uh, some jewelry um, inside the chest, um, and uh, like a, a necklace, a uh, um, a couple of earrings. Um, Many, I need to know. <laughs> How many? Um, there's at least three. Yeah. <laughs> three. Guys, guys, I found three earrings. Wait. <laughs> Wait. A second. Oh. Um. And then. Uh, and then where it? You find a uh, a little book and uh, some money organized and well kept um, bags. It's uh, it appears to be quite a bit of coin. It's not all just in one big one. It is uh, separated out into um, just by opening them up and glancing into like hundred gold. Um, chunks or so um, and there appears to be approximately uh, uh, you're not going in through it individually counting it but there's there's 12 bags 12 bags uh, I'm going to leave the coins for now I'm going to look at the book Okay. I mean, you open up the book and it is a, a counting ledger counting ledger um, in the back of the book is a variety of, uh, oh, when you lift up the book, you also notice inside there as well is papers um, uh, registering her with cities and the wave chaser. Um, basically a, um, a fantasy version of a title. Um, registration. Um, <laughs> driver's license. <laughs> uh, Yes, please. Uh, uh, general Mrs. identification. Mrs. Puff's voting license. Yes. Yeah, yeah. uh, and just a variety of just um, identification paperwork. Um, but the, uh, there's the accounting journal as well. But yeah, passports. Uh, I'm going to like specifically like pocket those as to make sure that uh, Moonzik doesn't get his hands on this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, put in Captain's three earrings, um, personal identification is one hey, item. What are you doing with that? <laughs> and then, with the well, other item, put in um, title of uh, title and uh, registration paperwork for the Wave Chaser. Uh, I'm going to hold this up. I'm going to say, well, at least we got the, the, the title towards the boat. Do you think we should uh, probably... You know, present this to the crew and decide what happens to the boat after. I think that we should give it to Moonzik. I mean, he did say that he was going to take temporary ownership. This is the official ownership of the boat. Yes, anything, I still I think, think it that might we should give it to, to I understand, but I think we should bring it to Moonzik. Fair enough. Um, you know, I'm gonna like you know hold on to that too. Uh, mm -hmm. everything else in the book is just, like, identification. There's no, like, secret writing, you know, like, con contacts, information, anything about, like, you know, this mysterious, um, God, I forgot the name, the Plank. Plank King? Yeah, Plank King. Not um, in this chest. Alright, um, also, uh, about the gold... What do you think we should do to it? Do you think we should just share it amongst the crew? I don't feel that we're particularly entitled. How much gold is it? How much gold? There's 12 bags. Oh, and bags so you think that there's 12, 12 bags of 100 coins a piece. So you think there's about 1,200 gold. Oh my gold. god! 1,200, that is, that is a lot of gold pieces. Um, I and the jewelry is like even should... more, right? Like I think, I think instead of distributing it amongst the crew, we should keep it on the ship and leave it as ship's funds for things like when if the ship gets hit, it breaks down. It's these are things that you know. It's probably what they were 
put down for the for in the first. Remember, one. Borth expressed no interest in managing or own, taking ownership of the ship. We're not really quite sure Heidi is even capable of, you know, owning this. You know, taking leadership of this and this state as of now. I think we should probably just give it to the crew in case they ever do get granted pardon or amnesty. They might be able to have enough money to start their own lives somewhere. I, I think this is another place that we disagree. Listen, if we're going to keep the ship, we're going to need some funds in order to run it. Um, can we take a break for, like, food? And, yeah, you know, I was. I was. Yeah, that's know. a great idea. We'll do that now. Uh, I was gonna wait till after that interaction, but yeah, this is a perfectly fine place. Because I have to so, uh, <laughs> Let's go ahead and take. Uh, it's kind of been a long one, so let's go ahead and take twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Okay. Break. That's gonna make a fair. So we'll be back here at eight fifteen or nine fifteen, depending on your time. All right. And with that, everybody watching on YouTube, this is the end of part one. We will see you for part two.